this is certainly the place to be. Tucked in here, northwest wind, just slightly off the shore, a little bit breezy out there, but what a day. Listen, Mike's off lure fishing. I'm gonna have a go to see if I can winkle a wrasse or two out. For that, I'm using the small size Namura, and I've got my, well, I'm in love with it now, five piece traveling rod. Look, it is only light, you have to look after all this tackle. If it's sport fishing tackle, you have to look after it. I've got 10 pound line on there. In retrospect, I should have probably put maybe six or eight, but when you're sea fishing, you always want that little bit extra, don't you? This is my wrass rig. Hope you can see this okay in this light. I've come around here to the side of this rock to get me a bit of shelter uh, from the wind so that you guys can see what I'm doing. It's highly, highly technical. Some of these, hooks and a weight. I'm not using a lead here because the chances of snagging up are very high. I'm fishing down the side rather than casting out. I'm just using nuts, and I've been using these for quite a while now, basically because A, they're free, and B, they're silver, and they shine. So well, what I'm doing is just fishing a single hook paternoster. Now, it doesn't matter which country you come from, this rig can work anywhere. I tie a knot in the end of my main line fishing line. It's a real cheap, easy way to go fishing. There's the knot. I put it through, let's say if you had a lead through my swivel, in this case, it's going through the nut, just like this. Any form of nut will do, but I just feel these silver ones, you know, if I can ever get that through there, like that, so it's sliding. Then I'm gonna tie just what we call a slip knot, like this, around there, I'm gonna do it real slow. And the reason I tie the knot there is so if it does snag up, that tag end won't slide through the slip knot. The slip knot will, I might even be able to do it here. See, there's the tag end. If I pull it tight, it gets, gradually works its way down and locks, okay? So, all I'm gonna be doing is fishing, maybe, I can't speak for all countries, I'm just talking about UK wrasse fishing, generalizing. About 15 inches off the bottom. And for that, I take a bit of slack, and I tie a big double overhand loop in there, maybe making the loop about I suppose that's five inches long, four or five inches long like that. Pull it tight. Now you could snip this and tie a hook on the bottom end, or if the eye of the hook is big enough, and I'm using, so you know what it is, it says B983, a wide gate specialist, size four. Relatively small hook for freshwater fishing, uh, for sea fishing, more for freshwater fishing, but listen, it, it does work here as well. And if you can get that loop through the eye of the hook, Gonna try it. You've then got double strength. I'm gonna probably have to go and get my binoculars to do this. See if we can get it through. Probably easier if I tie it first and then show you. Well, that's great. I've just gone all the way to the tackle box. I haven't got my glasses. Well, I've got my glasses. I'm obviously wearing them. But I haven't got my reading glasses. So what I've done, that loop, I've snipped the loop, gone through the eye and tied a straight blood knot on there. That gives me two pieces of loop, loops of line here. So it should one of these loops of line, there you go, there's the loop that I tied, there's the main line coming down, and the hook is just hanging off like that. There's the weight, and I'm about six inches, eight inches off the bottom. But by using a double double line like this, it helps keep it just a little bit away from the, the main line. It's gonna twist and tangle, but it doesn't really matter. It's sea fishing, it's not, you know, rocket science, is it? And also, should one of those get bitten through, that will still hold on the second one, so it's like double bubble. You've got a good chance of getting a rass on that, and this is how I hook the ragworm up. Okay, here's the hook bait, the ragworm. A thin tail at the bottom, a pair of pinches that come out and nip you at the top. Now, a lot of people just use a whole ragworm. They're not cheap, they're quite expensive. Let's get that line away from the camera, they're gonna be casting the camera out. I, this is the way I do it, I've got quite a small hook. That might possibly, for small wrasse, make three baits. So I'll go in through the mouth, roll it around, up the shank. These hooks, these uh, B983s, I think I said they were, are very sharp. Now, for most wrasse, if you thread that worm all the way up the line, 
you still got the hook point where my thumb is, finger, forefinger is here. That's where you're going to hook the fish. If they start biting up here, you're going to be striking and missing the fish. Equally, if you leave a big long tail down there, they're going to start biting at the bottom, you're going to miss the fish. So what I do is I just nip it off about an inch below where the hook is. So it's more of a balanced bait, if you like, and if they bite in the middle, hopefully I can get them. And of course, from one ragworm, I can get at least two baits. Let's get it in the water and see if I can actually catch one. Well, guys, I've got a small fish on. Just shows you that that rig does work, that you can afford to lose the weight on. It's not a big fish. Look, it's not a big fish. First one I've had. The feed is not big. Here he comes. There's that silver weight that I think actually does help attract fish. Look at it flashing in the sunlight. And a little dinky little wrasse, the first of the session on the rocks. Yes, we know it's not a big fish, but it's the right species. What we say, right species, wrong size. But listen, it's a start. And back it goes. Now, you're going to get small fish because I'm to well, I've already told you I'm using small hooks and smallish baits. So you can catch virtually anything. And hey ho, what is this fish? Is it a ras? Man alive, he looks uglier than the mother-in-law. In fact, knowing our family tree, it could well be the mother-in-law. Who knows what it is? A goby, a blenny, whatever, it doesn't matter to Mike, who's down there rigging up his lure rod because he doesn't want to go for ras. He wants to see if he can winkle out a pollock. There we go. Not the target species of the ras, but a nice small pollock and look nicely hooked there. And that's just a simple jig head, about a seven gram jig head, with basically a little worm in there, soft plastic worm. Let's get him back and hopefully get some more. Okay, now you don't always need to drop straight down the edge. I like, personally, this wall. I've never fished it before, but this is drawing me like a magnet. This sheer wall over here, I think is a continuation vertically, and the rats are really in tight along that. You, you think, well, let's cast out, we've got a casting wheel. You don't always have to do that. To me, that screaming rat along there, I don't see gullies that I can get to, except over the far side, maybe. But this way, instead of being up and down, you know, like this, you know, as you're fishing, you drop it down, you bring it up. You drop it down, you bring it up. What else can you do? Well, nothing really. If you cast sideways along the cliff, you can bump it and draw it and bump it and move it all along what we call the kill zone, which is where the rash should be. And you're actually covering different areas and you might even find out where they're living and drop it through their front window. So while Mike has moved in on my favorite fishing spot, trying to get a, a, a pollock, too late, too late. The old man's got the rasp from right under these feet there. You can just drop down the side or I can cast along the edge of the rocks. And that's what I've been doing. I cast along the edge of those rocks, pulled it back towards me. And eventually I found a spot where there's a decent little rasp there. Look, they're not monster fish, but I'm not using a monster rod, am I? A bit of fun and that's what it's all about. Well, that's a bit more like it, guys. Fishing down that side of that wall, like I told you, you don't have to go out. And whereas most people say, oh, you've got to be vertical for ras. Yes, as a sort of generalization, but you can't work that area. By casting alongside the gullies, I'm not saying you get bigger fish, it's just fishing. We all know you just go fishing and you catch what you catch. If you're youngsters, don't forget, they get little spikes here. So if you can see that, people just don't just grab the ras, there's spikes here. These have got little spikes. So you've got the little spikes to be aware of on the top. And just in there, if you... Stop that! <laughs> just in there, we're trying to show, we're going to the dentist. There's his teeth. I've no idea whether you can see that on the lens, hopefully you can. They're like little horsey teeth. They're like human teeth. They're like all parallel. They're not pointed like a full on predator, but they will take lures, no question of that. Hook comes out being small. There's the fish. We're not gonna keep it. We're gonna put it back.
When you've got a light tackle, make sure you don't use the whole of the rod to lift it up. Grab the line from the tip and pull on the line rather than break it. That was on the old drop shot rod. So that's a ras mackerel, and he absolutely folded it. Although it's not a monster ras, he absolutely bent this rod. Three to 12 gram casting weight rod, but it's actually got the sensitivity of like an LRF rod, really. But really, really good. Nice, powerful rod as well. Good ras rod. Definitely be using it for more ras fishing in the future. Let's get this one back. What size do you reckon you get a fish on that? Four pounds? What, ras? Yeah, on that. On the yeah, rod you'd have to be really on it to, to wind it in quick. But yeah, definitely, I'd say it could handle a four pound ras. Now this is what I call a boat. How old is this? Probably a hundred years old. Wood and canvas under sail of the South Devon coastline. That's the sort of boat that gets me very emotive. You're in the right area. What must that fishing been like years ago? My goodness, here goes Mike. He's baiting up again. Oh, hang on a minute. Is he actually changing from lure fishing? And he's having a go with a ras rod? Because I saw him snap that ragworm off. Out goes the bait. He's come across to the dark side, folks. He's come right across to the dark side. Is he gonna catch? I don't know, of course he caught some fish. It's such fun, ras fishing, on a great, great sunny day. You can sit there on the rocks, really enjoy it, and catch generally fish after fish, providing you keep those hook sizes down, you keep that bait size down, ragworm, anything like that, lugworm as well. You know, just keep chopping and changing. And important, I find, a touch ledger by holding that line across your fingertips. And not only do you get the visual aspect of the tip bite, you can feel through your fingers the bite through the line. It comes down the rod, it's telegraphed down the rod. Yes, they're not monster wrasse, but great fun fish. And if it's a safe place to take the kids, the family, check it out first with your local tackle shop. And you can possibly, yum yum, eat the fish. There we go, in again. Basically, if both of us were fishing, we would be catching fish after fish. But Mike was trying lures, wanted to try and get pollock, maybe even a small bass. Another guy just up the rocks from us and had a couple of bass at the earlier stage of the tide. As usual, we were late trying to get there. But nevertheless, we got the fish up. And remember, there's always another side to the story. And I happened to look across to my left and thought, do you know what? There's a vertical wall there as well. There must be rats across the face of that vertical wall. So by casting that light web, light, light lead weight, uh, the nut along the side of the wall, and then slowly bumping across the, the front of it, across the face of it, I'm covering more ground. I'm actually feeling via the rod top and down the blank and through the line. It's telegraphing any bites, any tremors into my fingers and I've got a feeling we get a hook up in a minute, and that's inside 30 seconds. Well, there we go, guys. That was worth moving to that other wall, as you can see. I just looked behind me and I thought, well, that's a sheer wall at the other, the other side of the rock mark we're fishing here. And, whoa, it's the same fish. It's gonna give me trouble. Water all over the lens. These Devon fish, you see, they're wild. Just shows you the same wall, the same feature, and I'm getting slightly better ras. That's not a bad fish at all. He's gonna go back, and I've still got, fingers crossed, the same shiny silver nut, the same hook, and by casting sideways, I mean, look, you could put it into a snag, of course you could put it into a snag, and do be prepared to lose gear when you go ras fishing. It's, it's just the way it is, but, I think it's worth it for the sport you get. Light tackle like this five piece, 10 pound line. And if you get something around four pounds like this, man alive, what a scrap. In fact, I doubt he'll get it out. Back he goes. Well, there you go, we've had some brass. There's a few tips there. Hopefully you can get it yourself. And I'm still going. And this one is totally different. If I get it up, it doesn't fall off. It shows you, look at this. A pollock, I've still got the same hook, still got that same old shiny nut, and I feel that that is obviously attracting the fish. We'll let this go, but there you go guys, look. Don't kick me in the face now. A little pollock, just nicked on that ragworm there. 
good bit of fun on light tackle. No, don't neglect those light rods and keep the weight down. Otherwise, you just drop it straight in the snag. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to subscribe and watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. We'll get this guy back.